Good evening. Welcome to all of you. Great to see you here tonight in the Lord's house. Welcome to our guests and visitors too. Those, those joining us online, we're thrilled to have you with us tonight on this Monday, Thursday, uh, when we think about all that Jesus did for us. We'll be following the order of service printed for you in your service folders, also on our screens. And let's begin by singing together hymn 417. It was a dark and dismal night. easy for you to do. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we gather in this service to commemorate the events of a Thursday that led to a Friday and then to a Sunday's proclamation of victory. In this service, receive our hymns of praise and prayer. In this service, may your word reach into our hearts and make our minds marvel and our lives become active in service and love because of your great love to us sinners. When we confess our sins, hear us and forgive. When we come to you in the when we come to the meal Jesus instituted for us this day so many years ago, help us to remember in true penitence what we are, and to rejoice in the full extent of your love for us. Through our Savior, who came to this earth for us, we come to you, our Heavenly Father, and ask that your Spirit's power be made evident as we now worship together. 
Amen. The congregation may be seated. Our first scripture lesson is recorded in Exodus chapter 12, reading verses 21 through 30. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take lambs for yourselves according to your family size and slaughter the Passover lamb. You shall take a bundle of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and paint the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you are to go out of the door of your house until morning. And when the Lord passes through to strike Egypt and sees the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over that door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You shall observe these instructions as a perpetual regulation for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you, just as he said he would, you shall observe this ceremony. So when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? You will say, it is the sacrifice of the Passover to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. When he struck the Egyptians, he spared our houses. And the people bowed down and worshiped. The Israelites went and did this, and they did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down the firstborn of, in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon, even all of the firstborn livestock. During the night, Pharaoh got up, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a loud outcry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not someone dead. When we confess our faith together, uh, based on Luther's explanation from the third, third article, uh, or the, excuse me, the article, uh, the explanation to the Lord's Supper. Uh, if we can stand. What is this sacrament of Holy Communion? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ together with the bread and the wine instituted by Christ for us Christians to eat and to drink. What blessing do we receive through this eating and drinking? This is shown us by, by these words, given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Through these words we receive forgiveness of sins, life and salvation in this sacrament. For when there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. And how can eating and drinking do these great things? It is certainly not the eating and drinking that does such things, but the words given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words are the main thing in this sacrament, along with the eating and drinking. And whoever believes these words has what they plainly say, the forgiveness of sins. Who then is properly prepared to receive this sacrament? Fasting and other outward preparation may serve a good purpose, but he is properly prepared who believes these words, given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. But whoever does not believe these words or doubts them is not properly prepared because the words for you require nothing but hearts that believe. The congregation may be seated as we continue with hymn 677, The Death of Jesus Christ Our Lord.
part of God's word we want to think about for a little while tonight is recorded in Luke chapter 22, reading verses 7 through 20. The day of unleavened bread arrived when it was necessary to sacrifice the Passover lamb. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go, prepare the Passover for us, so that we may eat it. And they said to him, what do you want us, Where do you want us to prepare it? And he told them, Just as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters. Tell the owner of the house, the teacher, the teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large furnished upper room. Make preparations there. And they went and found things just as Jesus told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour had come, Jesus reclined at the table with the twelve apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is being poured out for you. This is God's word. For years and years, the radio personality, Paul Harvey, had a show in which he would try to uncover the most obscure stories uh, about some pretty well-known people. For example, I, I remember uh, one of his stories uh, about Abraham Lincoln. And apparently Abraham Lincoln had gotten stuck uh, uh, with a, a, a large bill uh, that, uh, as he was, uh, uh, for a little while, uh, apparently in a business venture, uh, he was a, a bartender. Uh, and when he went to court to talk with the judge, the judge said that he really should uh, know the law better. And, of course, Abraham Lincoln then did uh, learn to know the law better, and, and he probably made a, a, a better president than a, than a barkeeper. And remember, Paul Harvey would always end his stories with, and now you know the rest of the story. Tonight, we hear in God's words a very familiar story, one we've probably heard many times in our lives, and it comes in the front uh, of uh, uh, tomorrow's Good Friday story and, and the Easter story, familiar to, to all of us. And as we see God on trial, in that familiar story, we see a, a time uh, of rest, and respite here for Jesus and for us. And from this, we know the story of the rest. This day of the day of unleavened bread arrived when it was necessary to sacrifice the Passover lamb. God had his people looking forward to this meal uh, for thousands of years, or hundreds of years uh, since they came out of uh, Egypt. Every year, God's faithful people would celebrate this uh, Passover uh, as they look back, thank God for the blessings in the past, how he had delivered them from Egypt, uh, and then looked ahead uh, to how God would deliver them through the promised Messiah. 
the perfect Lamb of God. And speaking of that Lamb, uh, God, when he uh, put together the Passover, uh, he told his people that they should pick out the Passover Lamb on the 10th day of the month. Passover wasn't celebrated until the 14th day of the month. Now, I'm not sure what those four days looked like in, in perhaps those Jewish households, uh, uh, perhaps in those houses that, that didn't have many animals. Maybe they looked forward to, to having that lamb uh, uh, around the house, maybe trying to sneak him into the house, uh, uh, feed him some treats, right? Uh, uh, scratch him behind the ear. Or maybe if it was from one of mom and dad's flocks, well, uh, uh, then the lamb still certainly got some, sp some special attention. Maybe the children would wash the lamb and, uh, uh, and feed him some special snacks and, uh, and treats. Picking out that lamb must have been a little bit like how we pick out a, a Christmas tree uh, or how we might get the Christmas ornaments uh, out of the, uh, the crawl space, making cookies uh, uh, or uh, stringing together popcorn. Now, even though uh, that, uh, that killing of, of the lamb that was coming on the 14th day must have been a very jarring experience, something that those children would, would remember. I think everybody in the house would remember that uh, when the Passover lamb was slain. It must have been a jarring experience, but yet it was also a little bit like our Thanksgiving Right where, uh, where they uh, talked about God's blessings from the past and the blessings of the, of the Savior God uh, the, that the Lord had promised them. And they were together. There were, I'm sure, tears and laughter that was shared. Rest for their bodies and rest for their souls. Jesus, uh, the one the Passover meal pointed ahead to, he was looking forward to this meal with his disciples. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go, prepare the Passover for us so that we may eat it. And Jesus was looking forward to this uh, little respite because uh, it had been a busy week. There had been the Palm Sunday, uh, and then Jesus had also been teaching in Jerusalem, uh, and then also uh, sort of uh, in teaching, uh, the, uh, duking it out with the Pharisees uh, uh, and the Sadducees, right? Uh, uh, and then eventually uh, Jesus would leave Jerusalem for the day. Uh, he wouldn't spend the night uh, uh, in the city. So it had been a busy week. Uh, and there was a, a, a busy week ahead, too, uh, because uh, uh, it wasn't long, and they would be in the garden, and the mob would arrest them, and, and uh, then Jesus would be taken to, uh, to before the court of Annas and Caiaphas, uh, uh, and then to Pilate, uh, and then to Herod, and then back to Pilate, uh, and then out to Calvary, uh, where he would suffer and die. And then he would be buried in, in the tomb. All of that was coming. But here, for a few hours, it's just Jesus and his disciples for a little rest and, and respite. He had longed for this moment. And they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? He said to them, Just as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters. And tell the owner of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large furnished upper room. Make preparations there. And they went and found things just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. So Jesus had just the right place in mind. 
And isn't it comforting uh, that uh, Jesus uh, still, in the midst of uh, all of these busy things, Jesus still cares about the little things. Uh, comforting for you and for me in the world where we live in, where so many things seem out of control, that, that here those things aren't out of Jesus' control. And he cares about the, uh, the little details, the little things going on in our lives. Jesus had longed for this time with his disciples because he, he did have some things to teach them. One of the things he wanted to teach them about was washing feet. Uh, how, how rest oftentimes comes from, from service to uh, other people. Maybe you did this too, but I remember when my children were little, uh, how uh, I would take it, I would smell their feet, and I'd say, ooh, stinky feet. Uh, and they would just laugh and squeal. Uh, their feet didn't smell so bad. Uh, but the disciples, on the other hand, they had been walking around all day uh, outside uh, in sandals, uh, and so their feet were probably uh, dirty and, and smelly, and, and it was the lowest servant in the household. It was their job to do the, the feet washing. And here's Jesus down on his hands and knees, washing his disciples' feet. Oh, there's something else Jesus wanted to teach his disciples, and he's got comfort for us there too. Remember his words from that night? Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. And those words have brought comfort and peace to Christians throughout the centuries, uh, brought comfort and peace to our, our grandparents and, and parents and, and their children and, and grandchildren. Jesus invited his disciples to this Passover meal. Judas too, right? Uh, and even though it must have been heartbreaking for, uh, for Jesus still, he, he warned Judas uh, not to turn away from the rest and the, the respite that, uh, that he offered, uh, not to listen to the devil. But yet he, he, he didn't even that. Uh, let that uh, uh, deter him from his rescue mission for, for you and, and for me. Because Jesus had, had something very special for, for his disciples and, and for us. And what Jesus was going to do it was just not sort of a, a new twist on uh, something old, like uh, uh, slivered almonds on, on the green bean casserole. Uh, no, Jesus was coming with something new that had never been seen before. Here, Jesus, in this supper, uh, was going to give his disciples, the, uh, in a miraculous way, uh, the, the very body that, that would be given and punished for their sins, uh, and the blood uh, that, uh, that he would pour out uh, uh, as a seal of their forgiveness in full payment for all the sins, your sins, and, and my sins too. Uh, uh, on, uh, on this night, uh, uh, he was uh, going to uh, give his disciples that, that great assurance. He, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is being poured out for you. 
With this meal, Jesus was going to uh, give his disciples strength for the dreadful uh, events that were ahead and, and for all of the work that they, uh, they have to do. And Jesus would give us strength too in a miraculous way. In this meal, he, he lets us know in a way that gets all of our senses involved that he loves us. Someone once said that we can uh, taste and smell and hear and see that God loves us and that our sins are forgiven. No wonder Jesus was eagerly desiring to, to eat this meal with, with his disciples before he suffered. And even as Jesus was looking forward to this meal, he was also looking past it. Uh, uh, the Bible says, When the hour had come, Jesus reclined at the table with his twelve apostles. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the, in the kingdom of God. So the Old Testament prophets uh, uh, and Jesus himself, they pictured the, uh, the kingdom of God, the kingdom uh, as uh, a wonderful banquet, right? And uh, this uh, uh, banquet, uh, our admission to that banquet is made possible only by Jesus' suffering and death, an eternal feast where there are no enemies around, only God and his people forever. Uh, on those long days of trouble and, and temptation, oh, we long to, uh, to take our places at, at the heavenly banquet. Isn't it true, though, that, that the enemy so often seemed to be right outside the door, just like the, that Monday, Thursday evening for Jesus? They make fun of, of the Word of God and, and make fun of us for, for trusting in it. They work hard to try to prevent God's Word from having any influence uh, uh, on our culture or our children. They put God's people on, on trial, and they judge us to be out of touch with reality. And worst of all, our arch enemy, the devil, like a roaring lion, looking around, looking to, to pounce uh, uh, on any weakness. Hostile, hostile forces all around us. Which is why it's good for us to, to be here tonight. In God's house, with God's people. Yeah, we bring our sins uh, along with us. We bring our guilt uh, uh, along too. But in this room, Jesus assures us it's okay. Our sins are forgiven. And that though there are enemies all around us, that, uh, that he still has things under control. My dad uh, figured out, I think I've told you this before, uh, my dad figured out uh, uh, early on in our family that he could feed all of his children steak on the grill cheaper uh, than what it would cost him to go to McDonald's and have us all, uh, all order whatever we wanted off the menu. Uh, and so uh, Saturday night kind of began, became steak on the grill night for us. Uh, uh, and uh, it was a treasured time for, for our family. We'd oftentimes sit and, uh, and talk for, for hours, treasured times now that our uh, mom and dad are, uh, are home in heaven. And Jesus has something uh, even better for, for us. Again, the, the very body, the, in a miraculous way, the very body that, that kept those commandments for us that, that we could never keep and the blood that he shed on the cross uh, in that new covenant that, that God has with his people, a promise of forgiveness through faith in Christ Jesus. 
Are you tired out? Are you a little bit scared uh, about uh, what's going to happen next? Are you a little bit frightened that, uh, that maybe God isn't going to forgive you for this, this latest sin? Are you having some trouble with, with service? Um, uh, come to Jesus' meal. It's okay. Jesus is here. He wants to encourage you. Let those enemies roar at, and rage. Jesus comforts you. And we come together as a, a, a family of believers, uh, people facing the, uh, the same, many of the same temptations and troubles that, that you're facing. And Jesus has the answer for all of us. Jesus is here. And we, we come. We come here because we know the story of the rest. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. If you're comfortably able to do so, please stand and, uh, and join with me in the responsive prayers uh, printed for you in your service folders, also on our screens. Lord Jesus, help us to look at your supper as the special inheritance it is. With all our hearts, Lord, we want to be thankful guests at your table. Help us to see clearly the dread seriousness of our sins and nothing less than your body and blood can cover our guilt and restore us to you. In spite of our many sins, you come to us in the mystery and power of your holy supper to bring us life and salvation. Work in our hearts through your body and blood to dedicate our lives to you. Help us to honor you at your table and in all things. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you uh, our private petitions. And tonight we bring you a special prayer on behalf of Peter Zimmerman, the brother of Linda Celine, who was recently diagnosed with cancer. Peter is a member of Trinity in Caledonia. Uh, Lord, we pray that uh, you would help the doctors and nurses to find out exactly what's wrong and, and what the best way to help would be. Uh, Lord, as they put together their treatment plan, we pray that uh, you would bless their, uh, their plan and, and their work so that Peter would be restored to health uh, uh, and again able to go about his life serving you. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would be with uh, uh, Peter and his family. Uh, give them strength uh, uh, since you are their, their rock and, and their refuge. And then, Lord, all of these things we bring in, in your name. And together we pray, 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, God's Son and your Savior, has been holy for you. He died for you. For Jesus' sake, God has forgiven your sins. Through faith in Jesus, forgiveness and eternal life are yours. To assure you of, our, of your forgiveness, our Lord, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had broken it and given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Dear Savior, we thank you for your precious gift of your Holy Supper and the forgiveness that is ours through it. Help us as we leave here to dedicate our lives in loving service to you. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to all of you. Great to see you here. We're happy to have our visitors with us too. Thanks to everyone who helped us to worship Jesus tonight. Speaking of worshiping Jesus, we have our services tomorrow at 12:10 uh, and 6:30. Uh, if you uh, uh, are uh, uh, in favor a, a service where uh, maybe that's, uh, there aren't quite as many people, uh, uh, it seems like the later service, the 6:30, uh, is the lesser attended. We're happy to have the, uh, the services filled up, but if you're looking for that, and wondering, the 6:30 uh, uh, is a little less. Attended. Attended, so it'd be great uh, uh, if you could go there. Uh, and uh, uh, then, um, uh, if someone, if some of you might have some time tonight uh, after the service, a few minutes 
to help us to set up some chairs uh, uh, for tomorrow uh, for uh, for our services tomorrow here in the sanctuary. That would be great. So, until the Lord brings us back into His house to worship Him, may Jesus send His angels to watch over all of you.